right, guys. How's it going? Welcome to the next episode. Uh, in the previous one, we uh, took all the teeth that I created uh, in the episode before that, and I actually placed them um, in the jaw here. Uh, so in this episode, I'm going to um, start actually, I guess I guess the word would be like not finalizing, but getting a lot more of the, uh, the more exact features um, in the skull. Also, I decided that uh, this first skull that I'm showing you here, um, I am going to uh, do it for 3D printing. Um, so we are probably going to alter the teeth uh, in a future episode. Um, looking at these, they actually may be fine for 3D printing because they mostly touch, as you can see. There's no space in between. Um, down here, uh, these little gaps uh, we'll probably have to uh, alter. But um, for the most part, these teeth should be okay. Um, but yeah. Either way, we are going to uh, we're gonna do a little bit more to the upper skull this uh, this episode. So, uh, first thing I want you to do is uh, alt click on the bottom jaw or select it over here, however you want to select the bottom jaw, and then just hide it. Same thing, uh, hide the bottom row of teeth, which I believe, in my case, is teeth one. It might be teeth two for you, but this is what you want to see right now. So, if you alt click on the skull, just to make sure it is selected, and then go to geometry. Um, you're going to see this option here called divide and i believe i explained this in an earlier episode but what that's going to do is it's going to subdivide the mesh um, essentially taking this topology that we have here and uh, i guess multiplying it and then also making the um, making the skull smoother uh, in general allowing for more detail to be placed so we're just going to subdivide it once and you'll notice uh, how all the control z for you if you zoom in here and you hit uh, subdivide you'll notice uh, this becomes a little bit smoother and if you were to subdivide one more time it's even smoother um, and when you zoom out it's almost uh, imperceptible um, how uh, how small the polygons are when you zoom in you can see them but um, and then ZBrush also has a feature where when you rotate it automatically drops it to uh, I don't know if it's the lowest subdivision level but maybe the previous subdivision level so that it runs better and then as soon as you let go uh, it'll smooth out again so that's just a, a fun feature that ZBrush has um, so we're going to hit BCB here and we're actually going to start, um, we're going to start, uh, like, I don't know, adding more features in basically. Um, so first off, I noticed these eye holes, uh, should definitely be a little bit deeper. So I'm going to hold uh, alt and we're just going to cut in a, a good bit more here, just like this. Um, and that's just mostly just due to this. It looks like it goes in pretty, pretty far. Um, so now we're going to do the brow here and you'll notice it protrudes a lot further out in this one. Um, and it's more of a, uh, more of a shape like that. Um, but these should be more, uh, defined. So we're going to add a good bit of mass here, just like this. There we go. That's starting to look a little bit better. Just adding a little bit of mass right above the eyes using the clay buildup brush. Uh, and when it comes to, uh, like miniatures, uh, a lot of times, um, it's in it, 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 for some reason, it seems like if you make these things look angry, it, you know, it'd be a little bit cooler for the, uh, the mini, but you know, we're going to stay off of that for now. Uh, maybe smooth this just a little bit, but right now we just want that, uh, more pronounced, uh, brow basically. Um, the sides here, uh, just like that. Let me see. Uh, this could probably get cut in uh, a good bit more here. Just make sure you don't uh, disrupt the uh, the flow that you have going on right there. Just like that. Yeah, just cut this in real far. Uh, and once again, in an actual skull, this would be um, to like a, a complete hole. Like there would be no... Uh, you wouldn't like go in to try to like smooth it out or anything because it wouldn't be there in the first place. It would actually just be a hole. Um, but for this, uh, specific, um, part of the course, I'm going to be, uh, showing you how to make it for 3d printing. So make sure it's selected, hit BMV for the move brush. And then I would actually drag this back a bit, this whole section. Uh, like I said, in the previous one, uh, the jaw, was just barely not far far enough back um so the the uh the teeth didn't um 
didn't fit entirely in the mouth. So, uh, yeah, now they do. And we're going to hit BCB again to get the clay build up. And we're actually going to start cutting in right here. So holding alt, you're just going to start digging in here. Just like this. Make sure you don't go uh, anywhere too close to the teeth. And this is just if you if you know, uh, like you can open your mouth and just put your thumb to the top of your mouth and you'll notice that it is uh, it is um, more, I don't know what the word is, like con, concave, I think. I believe convex is the opposite or it might be the opposite of what I said. Either way, it's one of those two things. Um, and leaving the, a bit of uh, a bit of space on the edges here will add to the stability uh, for 3D printing. Um, also, you know, personally, I think it makes it look a little bit cooler. But that's just me. Um, and now you'll notice as well, uh, right where each te each tooth is, there's a little bit of like a a bump above it. Um, so we're going to add that in. So right above every single tooth, we're going to do this. We already did this a little bit in a few episodes ago, uh, but now that we actually can physically see the teeth, um, it's a lot easier to do. Just like this, adding in the bumps, adding in the bumps, adding in the bumps, adding in the bumps, and then in between each of the bumps, hold Alt and drag up just to uh, lower those so it pronounces them a bit more. Uh, and then we're going to smooth it over. So I'd say hold shift and grab your intensity and bring it down uh, back to like around 50 where I had it before. Um, this is, it will change every time you reopen ZBrush. Uh, so you may have to, or you may not, depending on if you're doing this, uh, e doing these episodes in a row. Uh, and we're just going to smooth this just like that. It's looking pretty good. Uh, and then what I would actually recommend is right above each tooth, if you could sort of, do something like that. Like you'll notice there's a, a little bit more of a, uh, like a sharpness up here, just like this. And if you do something like that on every two, so just holding alt, we're just going to drag up and just remove some of the, uh, I know it's not actually meat, but some of the meat essentially just like this. Nope. Sorry. Just like that. Actually these back teeth don't really seem to, I uh, have that too much. So that should be fine. But these front ones, um, you want it to uh, protrude upward like that a bit. Just like that. Okay. And now we are going to uh, drag in right here. There seems to be a very specific, um, I don't know what the word is, like shape right in this area. So you're going to want to cut in there. You know, we're just cutting in with the with the clay buildup and then we're smoothing it out with the shift button, just like this. Okay. And then in here, these are more uh, more direct and exact, just like in that area right in here. I'm sorry, right here. Uh, there is like a, a, I don't know what this, what this, it's almost like a triangular shape, like right around here. So I think that's what we should try to uh, try to mimic. A lot of these things are very, uh, very small and hard to see, but they're actually, you know, when you, when you kind of go in and you really start like looking at them and doing them all, uh, it does start to, uh, improve the look of the model pretty heavily. So it does look like as well on the sides here, uh, it's kind of hard to see on this angle, but there's a bit more, there's a, a, a few like ridges in here. So it might be a good idea just to very lightly add in like one there, one there and one there and then smooth them over. It's going to be a very subtle detail, um, but it will, uh, it'll add to the realism just a tad. Um, but since these are going to be for 3d printed miniatures, uh, the main thing you want to go for here, actually there's the, that came out way, way too strong. So we're actually going to go in and, uh, holding alt or holding shift, just smooth them pretty heavily. Just like that. You might even be able to look at it from the front here and just smooth until they're barely perceptible. But once they are, yeah, that should be fine. Just a little bit. Okay, so this is starting to look pretty good. Um, if you're looking back here, uh, let's see. So the back of it seems to come to a bit of a point right here. So let's add that in, just like that. Add in the transparency, just so you can see. So it's looking about right there-ish. Add that in, smooth it, 
Um, if you hit BMV to move it, um, we can actually move that more into position right here. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Little addition. Uh, let me see. If you want to add in uh, this thing right here, but once again, this this section is going to be uh, BCB for clay build up. This section is going to be pretty much hidden um, underneath of everything else, so it's not entirely necessary, but uh, you know, if you would like to do it, go for it. I'm not going to stop you. Uh, same thing right around here. This whole section right here kind of looks like it goes up a bit. Just like this. Smooth it. Yeah. So now I would recommend hitting uh, Damien Standard, so BDS. And we're going to sharpen some of these features um, just to make everything pop a little bit more. Uh, when you're 3D printing, you want things to be a little uh, little overly exaggerated, especially when they're, they're tiny. So uh, all these little divots you cut in, just cut them in a bit deeper, just like this. And sometimes when you're doing this uh, very close up, these things may look a little silly. Um, but you'll notice... Uh, when you actually look at it in the final print, if you are trying to print something very tiny, um, they actually show through, which ends up looking very cool uh, because it's something you wouldn't uh, think would actually show through at all. Um, so the bridge of the nose here, what we're actually going to do is we're going to um, we're gonna draw a line straight up here, just like this, straight up and down. As you can see, there's a bit of a crack there. And then um, what we're actually going to do is hold Alt and do the same right around the edges of that. Sorry. Dragging that out. And then hold Alt and do the same right in the middle of it. And that kind of creates a bit more of a, a, sharp, uh, a sharp look here. Actually, scratch that. Hit Control Z until it's smooth again. Um, and we're just going to do Alt and drag up just like this. What I might actually show you right now is another tool um, called Lazy Mouse. Uh, and it's very, very useful when you need to draw like very straight lines or like follow a, uh, a pattern. So if you go up to Stroke, you'll see an option uh, in the list here. Mine's automatically selected, but there should be an option here called la Lazy Mouse. If you go to Stroke and then Lazy Mouse. And then if you click on Lazy Mouse um, and then increase the radius to something like, I don't know, like 50 or 60. And what you'll notice is when you start uh, drawing with the, the brush, and this will only affect whatever brush you have selected, um, there'll be like a bit of a delay. So for example, you see this red line? Um, that is a uh, that is what Lazy Mouse does. And it basically allows you to very slowly, like, you know, tailor exactly where this, uh, where this brush is going to go. So you can make very cool, um, very cool designs very quickly. Um, and, and they're a lot more precise uh, because you can actually take your time with them. You know, just some stupid little thing right there. But hit Control Z, hit Control Z. Um, so now if you hold Alt from the nose point and drag upward, it'll actually be a little bit easier for you. This might take a few tries, but there you go. Just like that. So straight up and down. Uh, and then maybe just smooth that out very lightly. Very, very lightly. But you want that very pointed uh, bridge right there. And now that we have Lazy Mouse selected, we're actually going to go around the eyes as well. And we're going to add in a bit of a rim, just like this. And like I said, when you're 3D printing something, uh, having this little rim just helps pronounce the uh, section a lot better. So you can see it when it's very small. So now that's very sharp. Um, same thing over here. If you if you increase the draw size a little bit and then just hold Alt and drag up with the Damien Standard, um, it helps sharpen that edge, um, which will allow it to show a lot better uh, in the in the final print. Same deal uh, down here. Just like that. Yep, it's looking pretty good to me. You want to drag it around here and just kind of end it. Okay, uh, and then I'm noticing there's like a little divot right there. So uh, I would go back up to stroke, turn off Lazy Mouse, and then go right into this little, right into the corner of this little like triangular shape that you made here and just hit 
uh, hold. Uh, I'm sorry. Just don't don't hold anything special. Just draw in right there with Damien Standard, um, and that should add in the little dot. And if you want this to look more fantasy like, uh, hit BCB for clay buildup. You can add in a little bit of uh, a little bit of like angry eyes, essentially, just like this. Um, hit BDS, uh, drag this up, give a, a nice clear divide in there. And then if you hit BMV, um, one easy way to make angry eyes is just kind of pull this middle section down just a little bit. And then the edges of the eyes uh, make them flare open just like that. And obviously that's not how a real skull looks. Um, but if you're going for like a, like a very scary looking fantasy vibe, then that fits perfectly. Um, okay, so for for the uh, facets of 3D printing, um, I would say this skull is pretty much done. Um, there's not a whole lot more you could do with it. Uh, all these features are protruded. Uh, one more thing we could maybe do is, uh, if you'll notice over here, there is a um, like an inner part to the nose. Um, if we head over to uh, append, and we'll append in, uh, I don't know, a cube, we'll make it very small. So when you append in the cube, go over to append, hit the cube right here, um, and then hit W to get the gizmo open. And I would just thin this out very, very small, just like this, uh, rotate it so that it is uh, in the correct or, or correct direction as the skull by holding uh, shift, it'll snap into the exact uh, direction you want. Then maybe shrink this, move it. And basically you want to shove this right into the nose right there that's looking pretty good uh, and then we're gonna we're going to go over to geometry uh, and Z remesh it okay then we're going to use the move tool uh, while pressing X to make sure the symmetry is on um, we're gonna turn on transparency so you can see it and we're basically just gonna pull this in just like that and then we're gonna look at it from the front so looking at this, it looks like it kind of comes straight down um, and then goes really far back in the middle here. So if we turn transparency back on, drag it right around the middle and just pull it, pull it back. For some reason it's not allowing me to select it. So pull it back pretty far, just like that. Make sure this part right here is coming up. And as long as you have symmetry selected, it will not, um, it won't deviate from, from the center. So it should still look okay. Uh, yep. So we're going to do that just like that. And then hold shift and just drag up and down it. Um, and what that'll do is it'll, it'll thin it out and smooth it. And then just kind of drag it back in, turn off transparency. And yeah, for the sake of that, I think that's not too bad. Maybe make sure it kind of comes in right there. And then this goes back far enough to where it sort of disappears in the nose. Not not exactly disappears, but comes pretty close to it. Just like that. And then uh, maybe now that you have that middle section, um, if you hit BCB, uh, you can kind of cut in these, uh, these side holes a bit more now that you know uh, where that's going to end up. Um, BDS and one more thing let's let's add a sharp edge to the nose as well so go back up to stroke turn on lazy brush lazy mouse sorry start at the top holding alt and just drag down slowly and if if this uh, radius uh, meaning uh, whatever it's at right here like stroke uh, 53 um, is still not enough to get you good control you can bump it up as high as you want uh, you can either, you know go up to like 111 and all that does, it makes the line longer. So you have more, uh, more, I guess, more control over it. Just like this. Okay. Dragging it down. Down and around, up like that. Just sharpening that hole right there. Uh, and then it looks like there's a bit more of a... A, a crack essentially right here. So we'll cut that in right there. Drag it in a couple times. Yeah. So for the sake of a uh, 3D printable, um, 3D printable skull for a miniature, that looks pretty good. 
Um, we're going to add in the bottom jaw right now, add in the teeth back. Sorry, I just removed the teeth. Just like this. Okay. And now for this, we're actually going to remove the, uh, the top skull. Um, you're actually probably going to want to go down to the subtool of this, uh, this little like inner part you made here and just drag it all the way up uh, and keep it beneath the skull. Um, now this is looking pretty, uh, pretty solid. Uh, I would recommend merging those two things. Uh, you can dynamesh if you want, but at this point it's not necessary. Uh, and then we're going to hide that and we're going to hide the upper, uh, upper row of teeth. And down here, uh, in the following ep or in the next episode, we are going to, uh, finish up this bottom jaw. Um, and then we are going to move on to, uh, I guess I would say the rib cage is probably the best way. Uh, and since I decided we're going to be doing, we're going to be starting with the uh, 3d printing version. Um, I'm going to show you, uh, how to do that properly for 3d printing. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.